Hey, hello, hey. my Kako. Welcome to Hey Hue Viola. My name is Kale Chang. It's my pleasure to be your host. Hey Hue Viola is brought to you by Ahakane, as well as Kanayo Kana. This series is an opportunity for us to strengthen our ohana by uplifting and empowering our kane, our Hawaiian men. Hey Hue Viola means a gourd of living water, referring to a man as a vessel of life guided by the god kane. In Hawaiian culture, gourds also represent knowledge. In this series, we'll be introducing you to some extraordinary kane, cultural practitioners, scholars, and leaders in our community. They'll share perspectives, practices, and advocacy in our lahui. Aloha mai to all our viewers. Mahalo nui for joining us today. We'd like this to be a very interactive experience. So before we begin, please shoot us a quick aloha in our Zoom chat box or Facebook comments, and let us know who you are and where you're joining us from. Also, feel free to leave comments or ask questions all throughout the show, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of questions during the show, as uh, we'll also do our best to respond to as many of these as possible. All right, welcome to episode eight of Hey Hue Viola, Smoke Meat, that's right. Our guest for today, well, he was born and raised on the big island of Hawaii and now resides in Mililani, Oahu. He currently is the facilities manager at UH Lion Albert uh, Redham. He practices Lomi Lomi and Laau Lapaau. He is also a haumana of Hale Building with Kumupalani uh, Sinensi, who we had as a guest a few episodes ago. He enjoys surfing, fishing, throwing net, anything to do with the ocean. He also has a passion for food, yes sir, and loves to share this passion with his friends and family. So. Without further ado, let's learn how to make some smoked meat with Kalalena Ako. This right here is about a hundred pounds. It's uh, two cases of pork butt that I bought from uh, Chef Zone. It comes Right now it's still cold, but it's soft. So it's ready to be cut into uh, one inch strips. You could use pork shoulder, but I just use pork butt because it's easier, it's cheaper. Well, now with this COVID thing, prices just shot up because the, a lot of the plants are closed down. Before I used to buy, uh, you know, like dollar, maybe a dollar fifty, per pound, but now it's like $2.10 a pound. These are USDA approved pork butt, but I also do wild game too. And I use the shoulder, the pork butt, the loin, the back straps. I use all of that in the smoked meat. But for this instance, I'm getting kind of old already, so <laughs> I'm not really hunting too much now. So I just go to a chef's zone and, or you could go to like Aala Meats, uh, Wong's Meats, yeah, everybody sells uh, pork butts in a case. So this is it, 100 pounds, 50 pounds per box. And it comes in six pork butts per case. So we got 12 pieces of pork butt in this cooler. And hopefully with my partner, Kim, we can dice it up. It's gonna take about, hopefully about an hour to dice up and, and it's not hard. That's what I say, just grab them and chop them up. Okay, so we just grab a piece like this. Let me just put it down. Okay, let me get this chair out of the way. So, when it comes to you, you see this opening right here? It, it, it opens up this flap. This is what I use to gauge the half. So, I'll just cut it right here in half. Just like that and then I'll I'll trim some of the fat not all but because I still want some fat on and then I just start dicing it up into I like to cut it into one inch strips so it depends so I'll just cut it in half like this and you need a sharp knife, so this is like a meat knife that I use. And then I'll just cut it 
in one inch strips like this. And, and then I'll cut it again. And this is the product. This is how I want it to come out. Like something like this. Like in little lengths. So this would be, so you kind of gauge because it's all different. It doesn't come symmetrical all the time. So you got to just kind of like look at it and then cut it to whatever size you want. So I, and I like big chunks, but it takes a long, it takes longer to cook or smoke, so I'll just throw it in my bin and then I just keep moving on to the next one and we, we keep doing this so these are the sizes that I, I want so right around these sizes and you can cut it thinner if you want. It doesn't matter. Uh, I like to cut it in this this size, but it's only uh, according to Kalalena's world. <laughs> like Auntie Kale would say. <laughs> but you can cut it however you want, whatever size you want. So I like to cut it at this size, which I th which I think is manageable. Yeah. So. You know, like this, nice and manageable. And then we'll clip it with uh, uh, paper clips. Uh, that, that would be the old school style, but nowadays they use uh, stainless steel hooks. They got stainless steel rods, but I still keep it old school and use the uh, paper clips. And then that's it. You just keep. Cutting strips as you go, and if it's a little bit too thick, then you can just cut it in half, like this. I'll just for to show. I'll just cut that in half. And you know, it doesn't have to be pretty. Um, because it's gonna go in a smoker and it's gonna shrink to half the size. So this right here is actually gonna shrink half this size right there. So you're gonna get so a hundred pounds is gonna yield you about 60 pounds or 50 pounds so you know it's not great but that's how it is it's the smoke actually shrinks the meat So there again, I'm going to find that half. And it comes like this already from the factory. And I'll just half that. Yeah. And then I'll trim some. I mean, I won't trim a lot. I won't trim a lot, but I'll trim. I'll trim some off just to. There's a lot of people out there that health conscious. I mean. I'm not really a health freak, but I still want to see if I can trim some of it off. And for smoking, fat is good because it keeps the meat nice and soft and shiny at the end when you're smoking it. Oh, wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Yeah, so I'm still keeping my same sizes. 
And if it's too long, I'll cut it in half. Yeah, if it's too long, I'll just cut that in half. Or if it's too thick, then I'll cut that thickness in half. So, I usually use about 500 paper clips at a time. There's a lot of people that use the small ones, but I like the big ones. I mean, it costs a lot more money, but it's easier to handle, I think. Everybody has their own preference, but I like to use the bigger ones. And then you're just keeping your same symmetrical sizes if can. There's no law or rule. Do it how you want to do it, but this is how I do it. And then you'll find some bones in it once in a while. So you want to make sure you take that out. It just gives you a better product at the end. But everyone who does smoke products, smoke meat or smoke whatever, everybody has their own style. This was taught to me by my cousin from the Big Island in Camuela. His name is Brandy. Um, and he's been doing this out you know he's in his late 40s early 50s I would say but he's been doing this since he was probably like seven eight years old it's been in his family for a while with him and his dad And he was gracious enough to show me how to do this. Him and his dad were known for their smoked marlin. And I haven't tasted anybody's smoked marlin that tastes as good as theirs so far. I mean, I, I've tasted a lot of different smoked marlins, but nobody can come to that. Uh, the flavor that they they have and it's and I tried to mimic it but I wasn't even close <laughs> these products is not the products I use uh, but it's similar uh, I'm not going to divulge the family secret, but <laughs> the, these are the products that uh, I chose because it's uh, available in almost every uh, market that you go to. And, and that's what I wanted to do is pick products that you can just generally go to any store and uh, buy these products to make uh, the marinade. And the marinade is a basic, uh, a basic you know, teriyaki style of uh, marinade so it's a uh, soy sauce or shoyu uh, ginger sh uh, brown sugar a uh, garlic pepper chili pepper flakes some salt and that's it and first I like to put the shoyu in first the soy sauce I don't know, people say show you and soy sauce and I just call it show you. Okay. So I don't measure any of my ingredients. I just go by eye and taste. And I use one gallon per bin. So one bin has about 50 pounds. So I'll use it, it's it's a lot. But I, I, I soak it and I marinate it for about four to five days. And I want the marinade to cover the entire uh, bin of meat. So that's why I use one gallon. So I'll just pour it in. And I used to heat it up before to melt the sugar and but I, I, I don't do that anymore. I just make the mix 
and that's about it and then I'll put my sugar I this is two cups right here so I'll put maybe six of these uh, cups and, and and I don't measure I'll just go two cups that's four and six okay so I'll, I'll just start with uh, two four six wait maybe I go one more now. four wait wait maybe I go two more four five six yeah six so I'll, I'll put six cups which is twelve cups and then I'll just stir it up a little just to break it down just to break down the sugars and then I'll speed it up by adding a little bit of water so it's about I'll say three, maybe five cups of water, and I'll just keep stirring it. And I use a big pot like this to stir it. And like I said, I don't use brown sugar. I use another type of sugar so I'm not too sure what the consistency for this brown sugar is but I'm just doing brown sugar because it's readily available in all your supermarkets and then I'll add some ginger that I don't skin it I just cut it into strips and I'll smash it and then I'll just add it by eye and I don't put too much so I'll just drop a few petals in and then I'll grab some garlic and I don't chop it I just squash it and smash it in this little garlic smasher and I usually do about 10 to 12 of these clove these uh, garlic uh, cloves so three oh and if you drop some in ah, that's okay <laughs> Four. Maybe we can get that out. So you just eyeball it. I, I just eyeball it. I don't really have a recipe that gauges measurements so I, I, I kind of just do it by eye so I'll maybe do two more two or three more okay then I'll mix it So I, I'm looking at it, I'll just add a little bit more garlic. These are little smaller bulbs, so I'll add a little bit more. And 
and I like to smash it because I think you get a little bit more flavor out of the garlic and then I'll add pepper I love pepper so I put a whole bunch of pepper in it you know not well not not real plenty but I'll add a good amount I'll say maybe that's two or three tablespoons then I'll stir that in and then I'll add a whole lot of chili flake and I just cover it so I can cover the top and I'll add a dash of a little bit of salt not not too much because the um, soy sauce is already salty but it just gives it another dimension I think according to the world of Kalalena <laughs> in Kalalena's world I'll just add a dash of salt just to give it another dimension and if the sugar does not dissolve that's all right you can still pour it into your marinade because you're gonna be marinating it for four or five days and you're gonna be hooling your smoke product every day at least once a day and that should dissolve the sugars but really gives it a a great flavor I'll just take a small sample that's it maybe a little bit more chili but that would be probably the consistency that I'm looking for so that comes out to about 12 cups of brown sugar uh, one gallon of uh, soy sauce about 15 to 20 cloves smaller ones uh, some uh, pieces of ginger uh, not clean I mean clean but not scrape you don't scrape the skin well I don't scrape the skin and then I just uh, cut it in slivers and smash it and then throw it in and then about uh, half a half a handful of uh, pakai and um, maybe three tablespoons of pepper black pepper and that's it and then I'll just pour it into this bin So with the brown sugar, it dissolves pretty fast, I guess. I mean, I haven't used brown sugar, but that's that. And then I'll wash my hands real quick. And I like to use my hands to mix it. And then I'll just spread around my ginger and then I'll low me my product my my pork so I'll bring the bottom to the top I'll bring my bottom to the top and then I'll make sure that it's nice and flat there's a lot of people that do smoke meat and they're weighted down but I, I don't weight mine down. I just leave it like this and I'll come and I'll hool it once a day. Usually usually in the evening right before I go sleep I'll give it a nice hooli and I'll let it marinate for, for about four to five days. 
Well, depending on my schedule, if I'm real busy, then it'll be three days. But it's no, it's no less than three days, and it's no more than five days. And that's it. We're done. <laughs> but this is the marinade. Then I'll put this. I'll cover it with a cover, and I'll put this in the fridge for at least four to five days. And that's it. That's the marinade. All right. That was amazing. I want to take a quick moment to, um, this is the most interactive our audience has been on this episode eight. So I want to give some quick aloha shout outs to uh, Rod from Cincinnati, James from Michigan, Tiger from Navajo Nation, uh, Umikai, we can't have an episode without him watching, aloha, <laughs> from Kaimuki, uh, Carolyn from North Cal, uh, North Cal uh, California, Walter from Oakland, Bert from Kapahulu, and Janet from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Thank you all for um, joining us. And um, I told you this series would be fun. I wish Zoom had smell a vision and taste a vision, uh, taste a vision to you. <laughs> all right, so we're jumping three to five days into the future, which is today. And let's say everybody say aloha too. Kala lena ako. Aloha bra, how are you? Aloha kale. Aloha kale Chang. Nice meeting you today. And uh, yeah, you too. Uh, welcome to Mahale uh, here in Mililani. Um, I just want to start off with a small kuli hoola uh, right. to get myself uh, uh, in the right state of mind. Uh, this, this is, uh, I'm pretty nervous. This is my first ever uh, webinar or talk. Um, so I'm kind of nervous, so I want to uh, do a pule ho'ola to bring my uh, kupuna and ancestors to uh, get me through this uh, segment. <laughs> so I'll, I'll start with a, a small pule ho'ola. Uh, it was taught to our pa, uh, Kapalo Nopuha, which is a uh, Lomi Lomi AA class. It was taught to us by uh, our good friend, Kamana Okrab. And um, it's a pulley that talks about Ho'omani yourself, like Ho'omani me, uh, to give me the strength and uh, Ike to fulfill my uh, my uh, everyday daily I guess projects or duties but I'll go ahead and say my opening pule and then we can talk after all right <laughs> Whoever <laughs> E a koro puku a hau make ole a palalau hala a ola loho a kapu a ne a ne Aula ia e te a tu a pe la kapu o mana ia o Mahalo my name is hey, Nui. <laughs> hey, I just want to mention before we move on, I want to remind our, our viewers, I'm so glad you took a moment to do that because as Hawaiians, we got to remember, we kind of just jump into what we're doing. It's always good to create a good space and prepare ourselves mentally, spiritually, and prepare, you know, to, to create a good space for us to do what we intend to do for the day. So mahalo for sharing that pule, that oli with us. Before we get into the magic, brother, can you... Go into a little bit of the background of yourself, please, if you don't mind. My 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 name is Kalalena Ko. I was uh, born in uh, in Kona. I was uh, raised in uh, Kohala, 
um, my my father is uh, Clarence Senior. Uh, he's he's a uh, he's a family of the Pai Aina Dort uh, family. My mom uh, is uh, Patricia uh, Napua uh, Lincoln, and her uh, family is the Lincoln, the Stevens, uh, the Lindsays, I believe. <laughs> uh, and I, I've, uh, I've been raised, uh, I wouldn't say the old school style, but I, I've been raised uh, in, in a time of um, simplicity. Everything was really simple. So where, where I grew up, we, we didn't lock our doors to our homes, to our cars. Um, my my uh, my ohana and our community, we're a tight-knit uh, um, community in uh, North Kohala. Uh, shout out to all the North Kohalans out there, to all my classmates and my friends. And, and, and I want to dedicate this video to my dad. Uh, who is uh, battling cancer right now. And uh, I just want to dedicate that to him. And we love you over here. And to my mom uh, for taking care of him. And, uh, you know, hopefully he gets better and he gets well. And that's why we do this pulling. And um, I, I came down to Oahu to go to school and to find work in my entire adult life has been on this island and uh I, I i work for the university of hawaii um i'm a facilities manager for the lion arboretum um and well, shout out to the lion arboretum staff <laughs> but uh, i wanna uh say that uh it's been a great ride here on Oahu. Uh, I've learned a lot. Um, and um, my passion is food. And I, I wanted to share my, my kumu uh, asked me if I could share a segment on smoked meat. And I, 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 I don't know about you guys, but uh, me as a haumana uh, to my kumu, uh, when your kumu asks you something, uh, you cannot tell them no. <laughs> I, I. <laughs> so, uh, so, but I love this guy. I love my kumu keola. Uh, I love this guy to death. And the reason why I love him is because uh, he brings you out of your comfort zone. And, and that's what he's doing to me. He's bringing me out of my comfort zone. He's challenging me to, uh, to be a better person, to... Uh, give back to the community uh, and, and you know it all falls back to the Ahakane's um, model which is take care of your kino or take care of your house so you can take care of your ohana and your ohana can take care of the community so when he asked me to do this segment uh, you know like I said you, can, you cannot tell you kumo no <laughs> I, at least I cannot. So, I I took the so challenge. You, uh, this is oh, my really? first. This is my first uh, uh, talk ever, and uh, I'm glad to be here. So you uh, you grew up. Uh, well, of course, food preparation and cooking is a big part of what you do. But what about the other things connected to it, like hunting, fishing, farming? Do you are you involved uh, in that at all yeah. in your life? Uh, yeah. So. Uh, my dad was a fisherman. He was a waterman. I, nice. he, he, he was a diver. He was a fisherman, uh, uh, a throw net. He, he, we, uh, he, he taught us how to throw net. So a lot, of our, uh, a lot of our time was spent down at the beach. Uh, we didn't do too much hunting up there because my hunting skills came, uh, came later uh, in life when I moved down here. So... I, I did most of my hunting here on this island. And, uh, you know, for all you out there, there's a lot of pigs on this island. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like pigs all over the place. So uh, I don't really do too much hunting now 
because I'm getting older and uh, it, you know, it's, it's, it's taxing on the body. Uh, there's a lot of running involved when you do hunting. Uh, there's a lot of hiking. So, I mean, I still do it today, but not as often as I, I, I want. And, and we lived a pretty simple life. Uh, we, we did a lot of bartering with people uh, where we live. So like if we live next to uh, our neighbor who grew vegetables, we would trade, we would barter uh, fish for vegetables. Or, uh, you know, if we caught some squid or whatever, we would trade it. So there's a lot of trading uh, going on uh, when I was growing up. And, and like today, even in today's uh, world, yeah, I, I, I don't sell my meat either. So I either give it away, I give away my products, I give away my smoked meat, or I use it as my bartering tool. So I barter. I, I don't really accept money, but uh, if you got something that I uh, I want to barter with, then I'll barter with you. <laughs> but uh, because uh, for me, uh, you know, money it's important, but uh, it, it, it it's not important to where uh, I need it like now, you know. So I I like to barter and 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 I like to give away uh, my products and. Uh, yeah, that's it. I mean, I'm, I, 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 I'm happy that I, I can live this lifestyle. Um, I, I know with this COVID thing, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, people out there that are struggling right now. And, you know, I, I want to say, you know, I, I'm so fortunate to still have a job and uh, still get to do the things that I, 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 I want to do. All right, Mahalo for sharing. Okay, so you live Mililani. I know you get maybe mixed reviews when people drive by. Hey, what is that in the guy's yard? But for guys who know, that's like a pot of gold sitting behind you. So can we get into explaining a little bit about that? That okay, wonderful so structure that's behind you. <laughs> I, I, I live in a community where there's a lot of rules. So uh, ultimately, I want to build a permanent smokehouse, but Yes. In Mililani, uh, it's not possible. Uh, and, and, and because there's a lot of rules and regulations. So I, I, had, I had a lot of scrap lumber laying around, uh, non-treated lumber. And I, I decided that I wanted to do something with my ohana and that we can all do together. And I can teach my kids. Uh, how to be, uh, how, how to smoke uh, meat uh, or, or just smoking products uh, uh, in, in general. So I started uh, building this smokehouse and it's, a, it's not a fabulous smokehouse, but it's lined, the interior is lined with stainless steel sheets. So uh, it, it's pretty, uh, uh, it, it, it's pretty uh, safe because there's no uh, wood or there's no um, uh, metals, uh, not metals, but like uh, galvanized metals that I'm uh, using in uh, my smoker. So it's all stainless steel. Um, on the interior, the exterior is made out of wood. Uh, I have my smoker uh, as a keg that was laying around my house. I don't know if you can see it, but I made a smoker out of a beer keg. And it gets ducked in. Oh, nice. It, it gets ducked into my smoker. So I also have a gauge on the top that can uh, 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 a thermometer that can uh, um, I can check temperatures, and I can feed the fire uh, with kiawi wood. I use uh, kiawi wood, which is a form of mesquite. If you're from the states, it's it's just mesquite wood, a form of mesquite. And, uh, I, I use a fan when the wind is not uh, uh, when, when I don't have uh, enough trade winds I'll use the fan to blow some uh, oxygen into my uh, beer keg smoker so I can keep the temperatures where I want it to be and um, 
Yeah, it's a it's a it's a homemade <laughs> it's a it's a homemade uh, smoker. Uh, it's not a professional. I, I I'm not a professional. I I I'm just a backyard uh, guy who likes to smoke meat. And I do have friends that do this for a living. Uh, and I'll give you uh, I'll give you his name and his company's name at the end of the uh, the the segment. And he does it full time. And and I'll give you guys his uh, link so you guys can check him out. And he makes he makes the best smoke products. And he smokes all kinds of stuff. He smokes prime ribs, you know. He smokes taco, uh, you name it, you know, briskets, uh, pork. So, uh, but I'll give you the link uh, at the end of the segment. Okay. Uh, did anything surprise you? Like you tried smoking something you thought might not work and it ended up being amazing? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the opposite. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so. When you, so like for this smoker that I built, it took me, I would say, it took me about six tries to really get it down. Like the first couple of times you need to figure out your heat, uh, how long you're gonna leave it in, at what temperature. So I would say if you wanna build a smoker, it's gonna take you a couple of tries to get your uh, system I want to call it system down. So, um, uh, so, so it wasn't like surprisingly good. <laughs> it was surprisingly horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, that's the fun part about uh, cooking is you keep trying until you can get that flavor down. And, and I, I smoked uh, smoked pork, which we're smoking today, smoked meat. Um, well, we call it smoked. I, I, and I, I have no uh, reason, I, I have no idea uh, how it became called smoked meat. It's actually smoked pork, so smoked pua'a or smoked, smoked pig. I, I have no uh, reason, I have no idea why we call it smoked meat, but we do in Hawaii, we call it smoked meat. Uh, and I've smoked uh, Cornish game hen, I've smoked uh, turkey tails, I smoked marlin, I smoked uh, uh, fish. Um, I, I, you can smoke whatever you want to smoke in there. Like, I, I don't know if you heard uh, uh, Kaikena Scanlon's song, Smoke Whatever. You can smoke whatever. <laughs> right. the, song is, the song is correct. You can smoke Mempachi, you can smoke whatever you want to smoke. But... <laughs> you still need to get it down so uh even even my smoked turkey tails and all the other products I, it, I still had to figure out a system for each product so not all products are the same and and if you don't have uh you know if you don't have uh access to materials so because i own my own uh uh business and i i I, I, I get a lot of uh, materials because I do uh, home repairs, but I have a lot of materials laying around. So I had enough to do this smokehouse. But if you don't, then I have things like, should I put it on the table? No. Yeah. I have things like this electric smoker where you yes. can buy at Depot. And you just plug it in and and sorry about that Colin. No, and no, no. You can use these chips that you can buy All from right. this is this is from my friend, his name is a uh, is Destin. This is his uh, equipment that he let me uh, borrow just to for this uh, segment, this webinar, but you can buy like apple wood chips, uh, um, you know, oak, mesquite, whatever you want. And you can uh, purchase these smokers at Home Depot. So this is an electric one. It comes with uh, a thermostat also. And it's pretty easy to operate. 
And if you don't want to use an electric, you can use a regular smoker that you use uh, charcoal or some type of wood on the bottom and then you can throw some of these wet uh, pieces of apple chips inside to create a smoke. So there's a lot of different ways. I, I, I've also done it. I've also done a smoker with uh, I've also done uh, my smoker with a wok, and I just uh, lined my wok with uh, um, tin foil, and then I'll I use like a little stand on the on the inside of it, and then I'll put my wood chips underneath, and then I'll cover it. Oh, I'll, then I'll put a, like a piece of uh, salmon on the top of that uh, on the top of that uh, uh, you know like. It's, it's like a little grill, and then I'll cover it with uh, tin foil. I'll cover the whole uh, wok with tin foil, and then I'll put it on my burner, and then let the let the burner heat up the wok to burn the wood chips and smoke it. And you know the salmon comes out about it takes about half an hour, so it's pretty fast. It's not it it it, it doesn't take like you know, two hours, an hour. Like this takes about three hours to smoke, 100 pounds of uh, pork. But the salmon will probably take about, you know, half an hour, 20 minutes half an hour. So uh, I'm gonna open up the my smoker to- Yeah, we got about uh, 10 the, more minutes. Yeah, to show you the finished product. And our and our viewers are asking, <laughs> open her up. <laughs> so I usually, I use, I want to blast it for a little bit. Can I oh, yeah. So I'm just going to up the temperature for about another minute or so and then we'll open it up all right um i love how you kind of gave away your recipe but you never like <laughs> you, you told him what to use but he didn't say the exact measurements i wanna okay half a handful <laughs> two and a half I of this green cup <laughs> uh, <laughs> i want to mahalo my cousin brandy Bude, who's from uh, kamuela uh and oh, he was nice. gracious enough to uh, teach me how to uh, do smoking uh, products. And if you ever have a chance to meet this guy, yeah, he's, he's a wonderful cousin. And I love this guy to death. And, and, and he's, and he's uh, younger than me, but I'm the older cousin, but I still look up to him. So he's, he's a cool brother. Oh, nice. <laughs> Oh, so my question was for the that marinade, can you use yeah. that marinade for this regular barbecue too, or that's specifically yes, yes. for smoked meat? This this uh marinade that I used on this segment is in here right now and it's I'm gonna open it up right now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Drum roll. Are you ready, Colin? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Woo! And that's the finished product. Woo! That is beautiful. And then we'll just let oh, so it. So for real, uh, paper, paper clips, yeah? Yes. All these are paper clips. My wahine wow. opens it up. 500 paper clips every time we smoke. So you can wow. still see some of the chili flake that's put out to this meat. Mm -hmm. and that gives it the flavor. But that's the finished product. How does it look, Colin? So it's, I wish I could smell it, but it looks beautiful. <laughs> so the, the marinade, you said, is three to five days, but the smoking process itself is how long? 
is about for this smokehouse it's about three hours but the, that's why it depends on your smoker depends. You, you have right. to go through the trial and error yeah it's it's not you're gonna do it one time it's gonna be great yeah it, take, it takes time and it takes practice so this is like uh yeah i've been doing this for a while so i kind of know the the amount of time and the temperatures that i need to get it to looking like this how long have but, you had that particular smoker uh, i would say less than 10 years not not too long and everything is on oh, wow. wheels because i live in a community that has a lot of rules so after this is done i'll wheel it in a back and hide it <laughs> oh. <laughs> i'll wheel this out of the front yard and i'll go and hide it in the back so i don't get fined by the association <laughs> <laughs> right right <laughs> but you'll get some Kali. don't worry oh yeah right on <laughs> what are some of the different sizes you've seen have you seen like are there really huge ones and uh, so my friend i'm going to give you the link right now oh yeah um, please my, my friend, his name is uh, Mike Kealoha. He owns uh, Sousa's Smokehouse. So it's www.sousasmokehouse.com. And try okay. and go we'll on add his that in our comments. Yeah, try and go on his website. And uh, he has a cedar smoker. And this thing is crazy looking. It's beautiful. So... If you get to see his smoker, yeah, you look in mine and go, oh my God. <laughs> 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 but his smoker is professionally done. Yeah, and he, because he does this for a living. But I want to plug him in today, today's segment. I, I want to, because I'm not, I don't do it professionally. I just do it for fun. But you can uh, mm -hmm. call him and place your orders in. And uh, and, and he has, he has a variety of uh, products. So, so yes. the, the secret to smoking is everything is hung individually, right? Cause you want the smoke to hit as much of the piece. You can hang it. You can, so, so, so this smoker that I have, I can smoke 200 pounds. This right here is a hundred wow. pounds. I'll, I'll, I'll also lay it down on those racks. You, you know, those racks that I'm hanging oh, on. You can, you can lay them on I, top. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I, I usually lay it down if I have more than 100 pounds. So I can, I can lay about 100 pounds on that rack also. So the, the key is making sure that your meat does not touch each other. Like it gets right. completely smoked right around. Once it touches each other, when you finish your product, it's going to be a little raw where it was touching. So you want it to be separated. That's the key to smoking. And, and then the other thing was the movement of air. Yeah. So if no more wind, movement, you got to so blow. I have a little vent on the top. It, uh -huh. it, it acts as a vacuum to suck out some of the uh, hot air. But I need that vent on the top to keep my air moving. Right. And that's what I, that, that's, that's how I get the air flow inside. And I, I usually put a, a, a little tray of water inside, but today I didn't because it, was, it, wasn't, it, was, it wasn't too hot. I mean, it's hot, but it's not too hot. I, I only do a pan of water if it's hot, like real hot outside. The humidity is like oh. hot. Yeah. And it keeps and the moisture in the smoker. It keeps the moisture in, yeah, yeah. But today I didn't do it. It's not real humid i mean it's humid no but need. not real bad but oh, right yeah. on. but but you'll get um, a bag <laughs> oh yeah and, yeah that's my only other question is i like sample <laughs> <laughs> but uh do you have any any closing thoughts for our, our gentlemen out there in our hawaiian community um before we sign off um yeah i wanna i wanna um I want to just uh, 
I wanna uh, I wanna say this quote that I I I heard in 2010 when I went to this Ahakani, and it just came to me this morning, and I, I haven't forgotten this quote, um, and it was at an Ahakani conference in 2010, and Kalekoa Kail was the keynote speaker on that day. And he was talking yes. about Papa Mau Kiailu, our uh, uh, master navigator. And Papa, Mau, Papa Mau's uh, quote through the uh, voice of Ka uh, Kalekoa, Kalekoa said, Papa Mao's quote was, uh, if I have courage, it's because I have faith in the teachings of my ancestors. So when I heard that, I was like, wow, that just blew me away. And, and I never forgot that, that quote. And, and I, I want to say it again. Yeah. So to all Hawaiian Kani out there, um, you know, this quote, uh, it, it, it really resonates to, um, you know, what we're trying to do out in the community. And, and, and I'm a Lumi a practitioner, and, and, and when I heard that, I was like, wow, this is heavy. I mean, it, it really resonated with me. And, and I want to say it again. And the quote is, if I have courage, it's because I have faith in the teachings of my ancestors. And I want a Hawaiian county out there to go out and uh, learn the mo'olelo from our uh, kuna and read all the stories in our history and, and 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 really get to know our people because we're wonderful people back in the day and we still are today to, to yeah. today you know so right that's my message to the hawaiian county out there and you know um uh, um stay strong and you know like 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 i said take care of your kino so you can take care of your ohana, your wahine, your keiki. So your ohana, your wahine, your keiki, and you can take care of the community. And, and you know, that's what it's about. And, and, and you cannot get any simpler than that. But I right. guess in today's society, it's so complicated that, uh, you know, I think we make it complicated ourselves, but it's, it's, it's a simple uh, practice. Yeah, taking care of our wahine really loving them and you know i want to just say this before we leave um yeah you know my kumo in one of our classes uh he 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 told us what is the best what is the best medicine for him and we were all like oh you know we're trying to give you know oh maybe go kapukai or jump in the ocean and and he was looking at us, he's shaking his head and going, for real. <laughs> because we were, we were so, we were thinking complicated. We weren't, we weren't thinking simple, simplicity, right? So right. he told us, come on, guys. What is the uh, best medicine for healing? And we were stunned. Like, we couldn't figure it out. And he turned to us and he said, Aloha. Aloha is the best medicine for healing and love. You know, love one another. Love your neighbor, love your brother, love your sisters, love your ohana, love your community. And we was like, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> so simple, but yet, right. in our minds, we're thinking so complex. But so, aloha, everybody love one another and mahalo for joining me today and mahalo to you kale for all you do and i wanna mahalo uh, kahakane and kanai okana and you know papa wala lokahi and the Quincello foundation and mahalo to all you guys out there for doing what you guys are doing and i thank you for being here and thank you for everything kale thank you Right on, Kalalena. I just want to say mahalo nui on behalf of Ahakane and Keola and Kanayokana for just taking the time to spend some time with our, our families. 
uh, during this time, especially. I mean, it's great that you showed us this amazing male eye, but more importantly, how to positively spend our time and occupy our time and encourage time with your family through activities like this. And again, main thing, spread that aloha. And it starts at home. Yes. So mahalo nui for your time today. We really appreciate you, brother. I'm going to do a couple of things to close off our um, episode today. All our viewers out there, mahalo nui. I'm sure you enjoyed this past hour. It went by too fast, yeah? <laughs> Be sure to tune in to our other uh, Kanayo Kana online programs. Lea nui nui, Aloha Rising. Uh, yeah. And of course, us. Hey, hui vayola. And uh, I'm sure there's more on the way as well. Follow us. Be sure to um, check us out on Instagram, at Ahakane, and uh, at Kanayokana, and our Facebook pages as well. We'd like to mahalo our sponsors that make Hehue uh, Vaiola possible. Kanayokana, Ahakane, Papa Ola Lokahi, and Consuelo Foundation. Again, a reminder, especially to our, all our Kane out there, during this pandemic, we want you to remember you're not alone. If you ever need assistance, someone is indeed there for you. Don't be afraid to reach out, yeah? We have a list of resources for you, of um, just contacts, and these will be available uh, on the show as it'll sit on the website later, so you can go back and check these out for all different types of kokua, uh, for our kupuna, for our ohana, for our veterans, and for things relating to this uh, this time of COVID-19. Um, help us improve. If you have time, please take a short survey. Your voice does matter, and we do want to get bigger and better for you every week. Again, tune in every Friday, 2 p.m. on Kanao Kana's Facebook page or website for Hey Hui Viola. Mahalo again for joining us for this episode. My name is Kale Chang, and we will see you next week. Aloha. <laughs>